Greetings, friend. Round six of the Sudoku Grand Prix has exactly one person who set all 12 puzzles. His name is Serhii Toshenko. We can use that to help us solve these puzzles. What you might notice is in round two, the puzzle grid looks very similar to this one from round three. So here's the puzzle two grid. It has kind of this upside down shape, but also has these digits in the corners, a few extra digits. And then this is the round three. So can we use what we remember from solving puzzle two into solving puzzle three a little bit quicker and thereby conquering this creator's puzzles? Well, let's find out. And stay tuned near the end of this solve for a very cool trick I'd like to share with you. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, since we have all these digits here, we know they put a lot of pressure on block seven and block one with all these digits. So you might notice these fours right away. They come down columns two and three, the only place for a four. Block seven is right there. So now we fill out this grid. And if you remember, there was a hidden triple last time. Well, we have a 2, 4, right here. I see a 3, 5, 6 here that are not in the block. They're limited to these three cells. Well, guess what? We have another hidden triple that we can use. And with this 6 in the row and this 5 in this row, you can turn that off. And this leaves us with now a 1, 7, 9. Well, I have two 7s here, so I can mark this for a 7 right away. Mark this for a 1, 9. And just like what we saw before, now you only have these two cells to worry about in column two. Well, I see a two here and a two here. It means this has to be your two. And the only last remaining digit is an eight to finish column two. Huh, can we do this again since there's so much symmetry here over here in this part of the puzzle? Well, we got these two fives, which makes for a five right there. And then I got a five, seven, nine here. And what do we have here? It looks like a three, four, five, six. Well, three, four, six are not up here in this block. They're limited to these three cells. That makes them a hidden triple. Since the three, four, six can only fit in those three cells, no other candidates can be the possible solution for those cells. And that creates that hidden triple we're talking about. And what's remaining now is a naked triple of a one, two, eight. But we can solve that right away because you have these twos here. To solve this two and then you have a one here which means the one can't be there it has to be in row three let's allow this to solve for an eight if you're just not familiar with these terms i'm using like naked triples and hidden and naked singles check out my pin comment below download my free sudoku solving guide i give you definitions i give you puzzle diagrams and how to apply these strategies and you can also test your knowledge against my sudoku shorts for those puzzle diagrams. And while you're at it, please check out the rest of my Buy Me Coffee page. That's how I get support from viewers like you to keep making great content. Okay, after doing all this, the same thing applies that we just did over here, right? But now I see two sevens in those blocks, means the seven's limited to this cell right here, and the only digit remaining is a nine. Okay, so we're able to solve that nine right there. And so we've made a ton of great progress here and I love what we're doing all through this type of symmetry. Is there some more symmetry here? And yes. Now let's focus here in the middle bands. All right. The one of uh, blocks four, five, and six. You see there's two sixes here. And then there's a six in one of these three cells because of that hidden triple. So that means a six can't be anywhere else along column seven. So where can the six be? It has to be right here. Awesome. And then if you look and see these two threes, and that the three is a part of this naked triple and it makes it a pointing candidate, threes can't be anywhere in those cells. We got these two threes. The only place for a three is now right here. Again, a lot of great symmetry here. And I love how this puzzle is really coming together. Now we're going to break the symmetry a little bit. You notice now you have these eights in rows one and two. And you have this eight right here. Now we're going to use these digits to help solve everything up here in block two. All right, first we got the two eights, and this eight means this has to be an eight. And now with these two eights, this cell has to be an eight. And 
Now with these two eights and this eight, we have an eight right here. And with these two eights, we can solve for an eight right there. All right, and now you have these two eights, solve for an eight and finish up all the eights. All right, so that the eight helped us there. Now let's look at these sevens, okay? I got a seven here. I got this seven cutting across. It makes what's called a pointing pair of sevens. So the sevens are limited in block five to these two cells, and they're in the same column. They're in column five, which means since the seven has to be somewhere here in block five and they're limited to this column, no other seven can be in column five. So a seven can't be in either of those two spots. Because of this seven, they can't be here. We can solve this cell now for a seven. Nice, and with these two sevens, we can solve for a seven here in block one. Now a seven can't be in those spots. We can solve for a seven right here. And now this is what I call displacing the Snyder marks. Uh, whenever you do the two markings, that's called Snyder notation. And when I displace one, I can solve the other right away. So now that's how we use the seven. Now let's use the five. So we got a five here, and I got this five cutting across. There's only one possibility for a five in this block. And now with these two fives, and then we know a five has to be in one of these three cells. The only place left for five block one is right there. Nice. And now we can move on to the six. You see how we used all four of these cells? I like how Sir he put this in here. Use all four of these cells because now the six comes up. It can only be in this spot right here. Now we can solve this for four. And we can remove the four from here. And now I want to share that trick with you that I talked about at the beginning of this video. Whenever you have three cans you need to fill in in a block. And we see here we need a three, a four, and a nine. If you look in one row and see it, that we have the three and the four, two of the missing cans. And then you see another row that one of those is repeated. So the four is repeated here. We can solve all three. I call this my neat naked triple trick. All right, it's a little bit of alliteration for you. And so with this three and the four, here means this has to be the nine. And with the four here means this has to be your four. And then this is going to be your three. And now we can solve this for six and solve this for the three. All right, we got these two nines here. Only place left for a nine is right there. Fill up that full house. And then these three cans, three, five, six, take those three cells up. So we know we're missing a one up here. And then we can solve this cell now for a six. Okay. Let's move on now to do a little bit more solving here. All right, you got this nine coming down. The only place left for a nine in block six is right there. Nice. And so now, see how this nine cuts across? We're missing a one nine here. So here's your nine, and here's your one. And now this is, creates what I call a full house. So a full house is when you have eight of the nine cells filled in. And so you know there's only one possibility left right here. So that has to be a two. And then this is going to leave a one because we have a full house in the block here as well. Nice. So another full house. And so we always want to kind of complete these. So that's a part of the grid we don't have to go back to. So we're missing a nine right there. And it looks like we need a one and two here. And then also we need a one and two here. So I'm going to, I'm going to mark this one, two, and see if we can come back and solve this a little bit later. All right. I'm going to look for where I have some other restriction. Looks like I have seven candidates filled out here. So... We're just missing a three and a four. Well, I have my four right here. So here's a four and here's a three. And something else I'll point out, if you wanna get better at this part and get faster at solving these cells when you're getting near the end of the puzzle, check out my all single cell solving methods video, put a link here. And I focus on how to find these naked and hidden singles very quickly to get your solving. And while you're at it, subscribe to some of our hobbies if you wanna solve Sudoku even faster. Okay, now what are we missing? It looks like a one and two. I got my two here, so I know this has to be a two. That's a one. And now this two is going to disambiguate this one, two pair, because that has to be your one. Here's your two, and there's your one. All right, with this one cutting across, we know that's got to be a nine. That's going to be a one. Awesome. And then these two nines, with this nine, means this has to be a nine right there. With this three, means this has to be a five. And then we looks like we have a full house. We're going to solve for a two right there. All right, what do we have left? Looks like we're missing a three and a four. Well, 
I got my four here. So here's your four. There's your three. Awesome. And then it looks like we're missing a five and a six. I got my five right here. So here's your five. Here's your six, which means we can solve this cell for a three. And then the last digit is going to be a six. Watch this video if you want to try to conquer the puzzles of another creator. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching.